Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another episode of Glass Half Full, a podcast and a safe platform where we talk with a variety of teachers, entrepreneurs, spiritualists, uplifters, givers, shakers, and serenaders. Everyone has a lesson to learn and a lesson to share. Let's use our life experiences to enrich someone's heart, mind, spirit, and soul. Through sharing our experiences, we can be a learning inspiration for one another. I'm your host, Chris Levins. Let's welcome today's guest. Today's guest is Don Abad. Don Abad is a creative consultant, speaker, and the founder of Sovereign Stories, which offers post-production solutions for value-focused filmmakers and content creators. Don is the host of two podcasts. His flagship show, Sovereign, is dedicated to discussing faith, family, and freedom, and why we need more storytellers to promote these three pillars of a person's life. He and his wife, Kimmy, also host Your Sovereign Downline, a podcast where they share lessons learned after over a decade in the network marketing industry and their best tips and strategies for building a home-based business in the 2020s. Let's give a warm welcome to Don Abad. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to hear have you here on Glass Half Full. We're going to jump right in, and I like to ask all of my guests that I believe our lives are in spiritual design. Can you share your life layout or blueprint with everyone? How you grew up, where, your family lifestyle? Well, I always like to preface any question about how you grew up and, you know, how you came to choose the path you are, you know, on now with, uh, I wear a lot of hats, but I'm really a storyteller at heart Mm -hmm. Uh, and a global citizen, really. I was born in Manila, uh, but right after that, uh, my dad got the opportunity to work in ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations in Indonesia. So we moved to Jakarta where I spent the next uh, 13 uh, years of my life, my first 13 years of my life, really. Mm -hmm. And I went to an international school, so that really exposed me to a global crowd. Um, And I I loved my time there, really set up a a big foundation for really a lot of the, you know, choices that I make for myself and my family. You know, I pretty much have itchy feet. I can't really stay in (laughs) one place for too long. After after that, um, my dad got the opportunity to um, work at a, a big global firm in the Philippines. So we moved back when I was uh, 13, 14. I did high school, college uh, in, in Manila. And after that, um, I decided to pursue uh, film and media production at the New York Film Academy at their Burbank campus. So I spent another year in LA. After that, I got married and spent the next year on the East Coast in Atlanta and just sort of did a a little round robin going to all the states, visiting relatives, just sightseeing and uh, the whole bit. And then we decided to move back to the Philippines to my wife, Kimmy's province, Cebu. We were there for another few years. We had our first child. And until recently, uh, now that uh, COVID has started to uh, ease up a little bit, we are currently um, in the middle of visiting our parents, uh, my parents here in Manila. Um, So we've been here for the last uh, couple of months, really catching up uh, with them. And I don't want to say right now uh, specifically uh, what our plans are because they're still ongoing and we don't know, you know, what the timeline is going to be. But uh, we do plan on uh, changing countries again sometime later this year and uh, just hopefully be able to give uh, our kids the same sort of, you know, global citizen upbringing that I had because I think that, you know, it just creates a much wider um, appreciation for for culture and uh, humanity in general, mm-hmm. and um, that's sort of uh, the timeline—a really brief timeline. Um, 
of what I've been up to. Um, other than that, uh, as for my passions, I'm a filmmaker, and uh, that's always been um, something that I wanted to do. And uh, when I met uh, Kimmy, her parents had been involved in the network marketing industry for a little over 15 years. So uh, I got involved in that. And that was my first taste uh, of the world of business. And I applied that to my craft. And uh, I was able to uh, build up a creative agency, which uh, uh, I lead today. And uh, that's basically it. That's, uh, that's where we are so far. Excellent. Excellent. I love that term, the global citizen. That sounds really yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you have a little of that DNA yourself, Chris. I do. I do. And I was like, oh, I'll be borrowing that. Yeah, I'll be adapting that for sure. Uh -huh. Yes, it's nice to be international. It's nice to have a variety of cultures and, you know, we can learn something from everything and have an, an experience. And it's just an awesome way to the you know that you guys are bringing up your kids and that you also had the opportunity to be able to have that in your childhood so really great super super mm -hmm. um i know that you do a lot and there's a lot of things but i specifically want to jump in and talk to you about what the meaning of a sovereign human being is and first of all can you explain to everyone what is the word sovereign and why is it that you've chosen that as your podcast title. Right. This is something that I've always been passionate about, but I haven't really been able to, you know, put a title on it. And uh, Sovereign, I really gained uh, an appreciation for, for the word Sovereign in the past year um, to find a way to really encapsulate everything that I do. And if you wanted to take the textbook definition of the word sovereign, it's basically somebody who's in charge of their destiny. That's the most broad way I can put it. Mm -hmm. But I further dissect sovereign into what I call the three F's. It's a triad of faith, family, and freedom. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of people ask me, what do you mean by faith, family, freedom? And I just basically pitch in the podcast and I say, you know, Sovereign, faith, family, freedom, these aren't terms that you can really define and get the fullest sense of. Uh, I think it's best um, illustrated through the stories of other people. And that's why I uh, set up uh, this podcast to tell the stories of people who are taking control of their lives and are working and fighting for something bigger than themselves. So uh, just to pull back a little bit, faith, what is faith? Uh, I'm a Christian, so I'm a big believer that you know, the Lord guides uh, all of my steps. And this is just my personal beliefs. But I do think uh, that, uh, you know, the God that I believe in and the creed that I follow is the fullest expression of the word faith. That said, I don't think that faith ex exercising and maximizing your faith potential is reserved for people of my particular belief system. Faith is just really the understanding and the embrace that there is something beyond you, that you don't live just for yourself. And uh, at the same time, I don't believe that everybody is just subject to the winds of whatever, of randomness, of change. I think that everybody does have a journey if they submit to that higher being, whatever they want to call it, the universe, God. I think that'll help elucidate whatever their higher calling is, their purpose is, if they have faith in something bigger than themselves. And when it comes to family, well, uh, I just happen to have grown up with, uh, you know, in a two parent household with loving, supportive parents, uh, a father that really protected and provided and presided um, over his family, took it very seriously, a very loving, nurturing, strong mother uh, as well. And uh, same with my wife, Kimmy. And, you know, that's one of the things that we really hit it off on is the fact that we have the same vision uh, for our family. And I also do believe that you know, the best expression of family is that intact nuclear um, family, that that household with a present mo mother and a father. But again, just like faith, I know that not everybody is, you know, living the exact same circumstances that we are. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people there who are living in a single parent household. Uh, they're not on talking terms with their parents or their parents aren't even around at all. And um, in that case, um, the family can still be um, 
a big value, a foundational value in their lives in the people that they care most about. Mm -hmm. Your family is really the, you know, the tribe that is closest to you, your innermost circle. You know, if you watch Fast and Furious, what do they always talk about? Family, this ragtag team of people, these uh, guys and girls who always say family is everything and they're not necessarily biological. Mm -hmm. So family is just what if you have people that you're tied to, whether they're, they are your blood relatives or others that just share all of your values at a very deep level that you always go back to them, you know, to consult with and to find motivation in that your family. And then freedom, I could go down a whole rabbit hole on freedom, because I think it's one of the most uh, misunderstood terms there is, uh, especially nowadays, uh, for a myriad of reasons. But freedom is, first of all, that the superficial uh, definition of freedom is just understanding that you have the ability to choose, again, your destiny, uh, uh, make your own choices, not be beholden to some, you know, arbitrary powers that be. But that's just one aspect of freedom. The other aspect, which most people overlook, is that freedom is packaged with duty. So if you have the choice to do whatever you want and make your own choices, you won't live a fulfilled life if that stops with you. Mm -hmm. You actually have to exercise that power of freedom in service of other people as well. And uh, this goes into a whole di um, discussion on success and significance, which we can talk about later on. But uh, suffice it to say, uh, when I say freedom, freedom is a power. And to use that uh, great Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and so freedom shouldn't just be lit for yourself, but it should be lived to pay it forward, to live a life of significance in addition to just living a life of success, which you can grasp hold of if you exercise your freedom to its fullest. So taken together, faith, family, freedom, if a, if anybody realizes that these that this triad, these three Fs are really the foundational values of every single person's life, then they can live a full, complete, fulfilling, happy life and become sovereign human beings. So I hope that sort of I know that was sort of meandering, but I hope that answers your question. No, I, it made sense very clearly to me, definitely. And your follow of it. It was very interesting on how you um, spoke about the family and the freedom, because there are you know, book text definitions, and then there are variations of that. And yeah. um, I'm glad that you touched upon the variations, because it's true, it is the tribe or the group that is closest to you would be your family. And sometimes that is not the blood that runs through the veins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not that same DNA. Exactly. Um, and definitely the same about the freedom as well. So really nice points. Great. Thank you for that explanation of it. Sovereign human mm -hmm. being. Nice. Can I ask, um, how can we reclaim ourselves? Um, how can we um, overcome that victim mentality? Do you have any suggestions about this? Victim mentality. Um, again, a really um, a subject that I'm really passionate about because a victim mentality really is the antithesis, you could say, to uh, being a sovereign human being. And a lot of people fall into it because I think that the victim mindset or the victim mentality is, is something that we naturally fall into as human beings. It's, it's human nature to want to blame other people mm -hmm. and, uh, or blame other forces, basically everything aside from yourself. <laughs> and, and we can totally all relate to this. I, I don't care who you are at one point or another, our first impulse was to blame somebody else. So mm -hmm. if we want to reclaim our sovereignty and, you know, shed that victim mentality, the first step is really just to gain an awareness of it, just to gain an awareness of the fact that everybody falls into it. And once you gain that awareness, you actually have the, 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 you, you can, you can actually build up that love for yourself to forgive yourself for feeling like a victim because you're not anything special for falling into a victim mentality you're you're not uh, you're not worse than anybody else that you admire just because you just so happen to blame another person or another thing or another circumstance for your misfortunes it's all about just realizing and becoming self-aware everybody falls into this mm -hmm. sometimes more a lot longer than other people but everybody falls into this and that'll give you the space to be able to forgive yourself um, for believing what you believe for a long time and then take the steps to remedy it and then from that point onwards obviously it depends on the person's particular circumstances but I always like to point it back to those three yes, faith, family, freedom. What are those? What encompasses those three um, 
values for you? What do you believe in that's higher than yourself? Who do you consider your family? And what choices do you want to make to achieve success? And then when, once you achieve that success, how do you pay it forward and impact people in a way that goes beyond yourself? And then those are the steps forward. And I guess uh, to give a, a practical um, strategy, I guess, that you can use is find people that uh, you admire, find people who already somewhat embody um, at least in, uh, somewhat embody uh, those uh, those traits, you know, find like minded people, mm -hmm. find some mentors in whatever field uh, you want to pursue um, in, uh, you know, in the faith. If you happen to be religious, find other people who are living out that faith. Um, find again if if you have family obviously the first thing to do is to get in touch with your family and get things straight with them if you're married consult with your wife what do you want out of uh, this marriage out of our life out of our goals um if not find a tribe of people that you believe in that believe in you and uh, mm -hmm. try to set shared goals together and then as for freedom you just got to ask yourself what do you actually want to do and again stop stop blaming other people realize that this starts and ends with you and the decisions that you make and not the decisions that other people make and the opinions that other people have of you. And then just work towards that. Uh, get those three Fs in order and you'll be able to slowly shed the victim mentality and slowly but surely start to regain your sovereignty. I love that. And we do have to really step into the forgiveness. You know, forgiving ourselves is huge. And it is a big step to making a chance to turn things around to move in a better future and a better understanding, definitely. Uh, I mm -hmm. like the idea of paying it forward. It's something that I have used for years and I do something for a friend and I, they're like, oh, I want something. I'm like, just, just pay it forward. Like do it for somebody else or give somebody else the same courtesy that I've given you. And if we could just pass that message along, you know, that would, even more, people are doing it, but even more. So yeah, paying it forward is awesome, definitely. So yeah. let me ask you, why do you have two podcasts? What is the mm, difference between yeah. the, I mean, you, we, in the intro, I did read about the, the talks of it, but why did you decide to have two separate podcasts and not make one combining the stories of both of these together? What's the, what was your thinking on that? Oh, yeah. Well, my flagship show is called Sovereign. And that's where I interview high achievers and influential uh, men and women from different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And we try to tackle, you know, the, the title of the podcast, Sovereign, and uh, dissecting that into faith, family, freedom. I just have conversations with them about what makes them tick, uh, much like what we're doing. Right I was about now, to say, Chris. just like and glass half full. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And um, I always ask at the very end of uh, the conversations, what is your definition of a sovereign human being? And that's sort of nice. um, that's sort of a that's sort of a gimmick in, in a way. It's just a way to wrap a bow around this thing and collect a you know variety of uh, how people interpret that term. But honestly, the real definition of sovereign is in their answers. You know, I uh, I touched there, I touched on it there at the beginning, where you can grasp sovereignty in the stories that other people tell. And uh, if you peruse my bio, uh, you'll see that I love to use the word storytelling, you know, because I'm a filmmaker, I'm a writer. So um, I, I really have a passion uh, for the power of storytelling. But I think that storytelling really is um, the key to understanding your fellow brother or sister without prejudice, because uh, instead of somebody preaching to you what they believe in, they illustrate it listen. through their lived experiences. Exactly. And yeah, the, and uh, listening to it compared to actually having to exactly. say it. So, yeah. Yeah. And you touch on uh, the things that you can relate to because emotions and certain experiences, uh, we can all relate to certain things as human beings that uh, you can only feel, I guess, mm -hmm. through um, somebody telling you uh, their experiences, their stories, and uh, yeah, their struggles, what they learn from it, all of that good yes. stuff. And that's why uh, uh, I did the Sovereign Podcast. I also throw in a little bit of social commentary uh, every now and again. Mm -hmm. um, and I never get I never get overly political on anything, but uh, there's a lot of things nowadays, and uh, I'm sure your uh, listeners can fill in the gaps. Uh, a lot of <laughs> current issues at at the moment that are yes, threatening indeed. our freedoms yes, and our indeed. sovereignties. It's still true. And so I touch on I touch on that because um, that's what I believe is my my way of uh, hopefully being able to pay it forward is if I just touch one person, one family to say, you know what, I've been blaming somebody else for all of these problems that 
me or me and my family have been having for the past two years or so. And um, it's time to make a change. If I can get one person to make that realization, I've already done my work. That's that's the whole purpose behind that podcast. So uh, that's Sovereign. Now, my other show is Your Sovereign Downline. This one's a lot more niche. Um, uh, You mentioned there at the beginning that um, Kimmy and I we're also involved in the net marketing industry. Uh, we have been for the past uh, several years together now, mm-hmm. and uh, it's still a huge passion of mine because um, uh, just a little side note, uh, my two passions at the moment, uh, film and uh, business, network marketing, uh, a lot of people may think, man, those subjects seem totally different from each other. How do they, <laughs> like, how do you connect them together? I, I think they're, they're totally related because uh, the filmmaking part, um, I mentioned a lot also, um, as part of my brand that I think that the two most influential types of people in the world are artists and entrepreneurs. Mm. And I actually kind of bundle them in uh, the term storytellers, because what do artists do? Well, they uh, tell they tell stories uh, either through a uh, written form, through books or uh, paintings, through movies, photography, what have you. Mm-hmm. And uh, they you know, they illustrate the soul of, uh, of humanity, of the human condition, and they help people learn a little bit more about ourselves. And that shapes culture. And, you know, mm. culture is everything in civilization. And in entrepreneurship, what do they do? They also understand the human condition, the human story. And that's how they create products and services that uh, augment, supplement, enhance, um, you know, the particular community that they're in, sometimes the entire world. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, artists and entrepreneurs are more or less cut from the same cloth. And uh, so anyway, network marketing is um, a way for me. It was, um, you know, as a struggling artist who didn't know how to monetize his his passion, his creation, I really uh, was able to do that first through network marketing. And it gives an opportunity to everyone this business model does. And so now I have a passion to... um, Uh, both Kimmy and I to share this amazing concept with as many people as we can to really smash a lot of the myths and misconceptions that the industry unfortunately has uh, Mm -hmm. through this podcast. We talk about our experiences, lessons learned, and strategies really for using the power of internet marketing to build a brand and uh, build your network marketing business uh, on the web. Wow, super. And how do you have time to be social? You're a family man. You got two podcasts. Okay. <laughs> you're busy. Oh, Chris, you know, there when you have when you're raising a hyperactive, ambitious, really um a two year old who's <laughs> we're 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 in the terrible two stage, oh you know. Gosh. I mean, he's 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 practically a teenager. He has an attitude, <laughs> he always wants to do things his way. This is what I've I'll heard. Totally, this is what I've heard. I'll be totally transparent, okay? I, I don't have a social life at the moment. <laughs> okay. Well, understandably <laughs> and, so. If you told me you did, I was just I'm sure everybody would be grabbing their pen and paper, like, okay, well, what do we need to I, do? You know. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just a human being like all of you. Well, <laughs> you're a dad. You know, I, you're a you're a family I'm a man. Dad. So that's awesome. Yes. And you're doing podcasts, so you're doing stuff. Like it takes time to mm-hmm. record, talk to people editing and yeah. you know so advertising so i take yeah. my hat off you that you're doing it and it seems that you're doing well so that's great oh, thank you yeah <laughs> actually um if i may chris i um the the pandemic really um helped me to uh realize that there there were ways for me to accomplish a lot of the things that i personally wanted to do mm-hmm. um while being able to do family life at the same time. And you know, I, I don't know the story behind uh, Glass Half Full for you, but I know that uh, you're more or less, um, you more or less started it in the thick of uh, this crisis right now. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, a lot a lot of people I know started a podcast because, I mean, b- they basically had nothing else to do for the most part. <laughs> so they started a podcast. And, and I realized, I mean, this is something I've always wanted to do. In fact, I started a podcast way back in 2018, kind of fizzled out. Um, you know, the, there's a statistic going around saying that most podcasts die after the sixth episode. So wow, not to really? be outdone. Not wow. to be outdone. I did seven episodes. Okay, then so you I broke that. Quit. You broke that. <laughs> <laughs> I broke that. I broke that by one episode. But uh, anyway, so now I realize, you know, I, I have. I have I have goals, I have dreams, I have a bunch of ambitions, you know, the best way to build a brand in well, the 2020s really is to start a podcast and start telling your story and all of that stuff. Yes. And so I realize if not now, it's never going to happen. And I have no excuse because it's so easy to to set one up. 
and uh, just get things going and uh, still be able to <laughs> attend to my my two year old at the same time. So I mean, it worked out. I wouldn't have it any other way. No, well, congratulations because things are are definitely in a successful way. So, and um, mm-hmm. I had a chance to take a listen to your podcast, um, and I really enjoyed episode twenty four. It was the six biggest lessons that you had learned in twenty twenty one. You and Kimmy. And mm-hmm. um, it was really great. Like some of the things I had thought of myself that, you know, for my own life, but others were really great. Um, just to touch on a few, um, anything can happen was one of the um, points uh-huh. made. I think Kimmy spoke on that. Um, and then don't wait for permission to make a right decision for you or your family. And I thought that was also awesome. I think that was from you. Um, and then focus on your goals um, and things might happen, but try to stay on your goals, um, diversity, um, mm-hmm. and adaptation, how to adapt to the situation, maybe find a new, a new path to get us there. And that now is not the time to stay quiet about your beliefs. Yeah. And, um, I thought that was really powerful because, you know, in lots of positions it's saying like, well, do I say something or, you know, if I am Christian, do I open my mouth? <laughs> do I uh-huh. not, do I want to be, you know, people to be judging me on, on my content or are they going to be judging me based on what it is that I'm standing up for? So, um, really, really excellent. Um, they were points that you guys have pointed out for your life, but they touched me in mine as well. So, um, I just wanted to let you know, I really enjoyed that episode. Oh, thank that you. you guys had thank done. you. Definitely. Um, Now in 2022, um, the things that you talked about are these lessons learned. Have you already started to adapt them into play for this year? Oh, yeah. Um, These are, well, honestly, that that episode was titled Things We Learned in 2021. I sort of, we sort of had all of that uh, in mind, all the things we said in mind back in 2020, at the end of 2020. Um, It's (laughs) only... But it was only recently that we were finally able to really put it into words. And okay. um, yeah, absolutely. We've been practicing that. And um, I mean, I guess if anybody's listening who also is on the fence, they want to start something new, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a business, what have you. Um, thanks for reminding me of that one point I made, Chris, about uh, now is not the time to be silent about your beliefs. Because to me, that's probably the lesson that resonates with me the strongest. Because uh, um, again, just uh, linking this back to the earlier point I made about um, the pandemic really helped me realize that there's no excuse, that mm-hmm. there are means today to really be able to chase your dreams, especially if you're an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I started the podcast. If you have something on your heart, on your soul that you really believe in, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to name specifics on the show. I don't think it's the appropriate venue. But if you have anything that you need to say, get off your chest and mm-hmm. touch another person with, now is the time to do it because we have the tools. I mean, the tools that we have today to communicate and to build a business, to build a following, this was not available even just, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. It's so true. And, and I mean, it's so easy. You don't even have to have a, you know, a good setup, you know, just if, even if you have a phone, you can start a podcast. But anyway, I don't want to limit this to uh, the notion of starting a podcast. The point is, with all the tools that we have, mm-hmm. uh, cost effective tools, even if you want to start something, if you want to touch someone else, if you have a personal mission vision, um, now is really the time to do it because everybody is looking for a role model, yes. or even not even a role model, somebody who's voice verbally expresses something that's been on their heart, but they never had the courage or the wherewithal or what what have you to do their own thing, to speak mm-hmm. up. They need somebody to inspire courage in their hearts. They're yes. looking for positivity. Let's just put it that way. People mm-hmm. are looking for positivity nowadays. We've been handed a platter of negativity over the past two <laughs> years. And everybody just wants to find something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. And joy. so that was... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some some joy and some, I mean, just looking beyond this bubble and, and all the doom and gloom that our mainstream media feeds us every single day. Even if we shut off the news, we can't help but, you know, we kind of live in a culture of fear. And I'm starting to head down a rabbit hole. Stop me, Chris. Too far. But <laughs> no, go ahead. T- tell live- us. Talk to us. Talk to us. What about yes. the fear? 
we we are i i believe living in a culture of fear today for the most part depending on your environment for, but for the majority of the world we're living in a culture of fear and even if we have turned off all you know the cnns and the fox newses and all that stuff mm -hmm. the people around us the average person i i hate to say that i don't want to sound elitist or anything but the average person again we can't help but fall into victim mentality mm -hmm. the average person is blaming this politician or this circumstance or that mandate or you know all of these <laughs> things for whatever whatever they're going through right now and it's easy to um you know <laughs> i think it's too soon to use a, a viral um, you know, metaphor, but to catch that and uh, let it infect us and mm -hmm. let it infect our mindset. <laughs> it's so, it's so easy to fall into that. And uh, so, so I say, look for the right people. And again, this touches on something I said earlier, find like-minded people to connect with who uh, have that positive mindset and positive outlook that you're looking for, because that'll help you to stay well, positive yeah. uh, throughout this whole ordeal. And uh, if, and we we need more voices. We need more positive That's voices true. in this world. So um, if if it's in you, if if you believe that uh, you need to get this message out there, you can't just keep it in. You have a responsibility for your family and other families as well to um, talk about things that really matter to you that leads the world in a positive direction. Then I say go for it. I hope that my uh, I hope that my example, um, not that I'm you know any big influential figure or anything like that but uh, i at least uh, stepped out of my shell and, and let me tell you right now chris like if it wasn't for um the things that drive me that uh, my belief that i shouldn't keep my uh what do you whatever you want to say talent skills whatever if i didn't feel that god was pushing me to uh, share these things that I have with the world, share these gifts with the world. I totally be off social media and just be off in a farm somewhere. Uh, I was telling you off air that uh, we were <laughs> off riding horses and uh, feeding sheep in the mountain in the mountains uh, over the weekend. I'd do that all my life if I could, but uh, you know, there's a bigger calling out there. You know, and I think which that is all true. Of us, is and you know, yeah. it doesn't sound like a bad thing at all. But it's true. We can go and sometimes bury our gifts. Or we can go ahead and, you know, really use them. And once we really use them, we really can touch the power and the magic of what we're really supposed to do. And others yes. as well. It's like a chain reaction, you know. And uh -huh. I, I think that it's great. And it all it takes is just one person to make a, a change, you know. And from that one person, there's a ripple effect that, you know, we affect other people. So just one you know, if, like you were saying, if you exactly. could just reach one person, you know, you have done your job and done your duty over and some. So uh -huh. awesome. Yep. Let's change a little bit. I want to ask you if you had to choose one color to describe yourself, what color would you choose and why? Oh, I'd probably uh, probably choose brown. Again, I'm a. I, I, I like I like nature. I think nature is my uh, my habitat. That's where I feel most alive. So mm. yeah, brown, green. Okay, that's around, two colors. Uh, that spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> Earth, earth, earthy colors. Let's just uh, let's just combine. Okay, it to that's a colors. smart man. Yeah. Yes, that's a smart yeah. man. Good, you fall into a nice one. Yeah, earth tones are nice. Yeah, I, I like the mm -hmm. earth tones too. Awesome. Yep. Let's play a little fill in the blank. Um, I'm going to read the topic and I'll let you fill in the rest of it. Um, the first one is I'm most understanding when. I'm talking to great people like you, Chris. That's what I'm most understanding. <laughs> no, but uh, a, a little, let's uh, peel the onion a little bit, a little deeper than that. It's uh, honesty. I mean, I'm enjoying this. I've done a lot of podcasts. This is one of my favorite ones so far. And get out like of halfway here! Through it. No, no, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't, I, I don't, I don't blow smoke up people's butts, man. This is, uh, yeah, no, this is, uh, no, really, really, on honesty and um, not having a mask on. And listen, we're recording this. I can't even see your face. You can't even see mine. But it's I true. see a lot of, I see a lot of truth and authenticity in what you're in in what you're trying to do uh, with the show. So, um, so anybody much. who's Anybody who talks like you, and come on, guys, this guy has a calming voice. Chris has one of the most uh, <laughs> opening, welcming, calming voices I've, I've ever heard. So oh, uh, this this helps me this helps me open up. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of forgot what the question was. What was it? Me meaningful? When do I get? Uh, it's no, question? you answered it. You answered it. it was, it's I'm most understanding when 
most understanding. That's right. Yeah, this yeah, is what's yeah. this is what makes me most understanding. Honesty. Yes. What a great answer. Nice. Well, thank you. Maybe it's the entrepreneur and the entertainer in me <laughs> that bring <laughs> the yes. combination of them both putting it there together. There we go. There we go. Yes. Okay. Next one. I get defensive most when someone threatens my sovereignty. Ooh, yes. Yeah, huh? That was you good. You knew that was coming. <laughs> you knew that was coming. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Definitely. Pa-ching. I need a sound effect there. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Next one is I keep good mental health by uh, turning the phone off, turning the laptop off, and stepping outside. Okay. Let's talk about that for a moment. So okay. turning off your electronics is yep. what it comes down to. And why the electronics? And the electronics, because it traps me in this, uh, uh, sorry for the pun, but this uh, this little meta world mm. um, that uh, takes us. Uh, yeah, um, I was actually thinking about uh, those two, uh, what uh, improves my mental health and what helps me stay in the moment. I think it's one and the same, you know, if... Uh, I mean, I'm again. I'm I'm only human. If you if you keep me on social media, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep scrolling. I mean, I can't help it, <laughs> and uh, I I have to catch myself sometimes, you know. And uh, yeah, I mean, just turning off all the devices and just uh, being with my family, and uh, even better if we're outdoors and we're riding horses and we're feeding the animals and we're just on the farm, fair. right? I mean, nothing, nothing beyond that. Um, as as simple a life as that. Uh, helps me helps me stay positive and uh, stay in the moment. I like that. I mean, social media can be very heavy. It can change your mood. You know, some people starting their day, I don't start my day off that way, but I have lots of friends who do. And their biggest thing is that sometimes they can just be upset for a few hours by something they read that was on the top page of their Facebook page or something of that um so oh, and uh, let's 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 not forget let's not forget what uh, we were talking about earlier comparison that is the i mean it's almost a cliche to say it now but we tend to compare ourselves to others on social media and yes, not even like uh, the, the 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 usual thing that people say is you know you tend to compare yourself to somebody who's more successful than you better looking than you or whatever um but you also tend to compare your suffering i think to somebody on social media. Mm. I think there's a lot of that, uh, um, excuse the the term fear porn uh, that's going on right now. It's like whoever has uh, the biggest struggle or biggest challenge or biggest obstacle right now, we, we even try to one up each other. Is that uh, happening? On that. that actually, I see that sometimes people are talking about that. I mean, I, I don't want to rag on, um, you know, specific uh, channels or anything, but um, on TikTok wow. and a lot of the younger generation, this is something I'm really passionate about because this is affecting the the younger generation for obvious reasons, because they're so impressionable. Mm -hmm. um, there's this sort of like, um, we're talking about mental health, um, this uh, this whole trend on, on TikTok and I guess on other platforms where people are trying to romanticize um, poor mental health or depression. What? I guess. Oh my God. Yeah. And people are saying, you know, I, I, I cut myself today or I mean, I, it, it makes me kind of cringe just, just wow. talking about. It. So I, I don't like to touch this at all, but I mean, I, didn't with even a, know I have a child, on. I have a child myself and this is uh, really, this is why I want to spend as much time as possible away from, we don't uh, let our kid watch anything. Um, on any device uh, we don't let them use social media unlike a lot of kids around them because it's mm -hmm. so easy to fall into this trap and us mm -hmm. parents we think it's totally normal um right now for kids to be you know watching all these things on youtube and it's going true. on social media but before we know it they they get into these little clicks and they find these little trends and they and they attach themselves to it mm -hmm. um so yeah it's again, causing them to down, grow, grow up yeah. a little bit too you know too soon there's certain things they shouldn't even know about there's things that shouldn't even be discussed about stay you know as children they should be in their bubble you know the world mm -hmm. is when it's time to learn about it they will learn about it because they'll be in it for the rest of their lives but you know, right now, and the real this, world. Yes, yes. The the real world where real not, things not are the happening. Social media world. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. know, so it's. I agree. It is. It can be a poison, and you know, for some of these young kids, they don't need to have it. It's. I don't feel that it's anything making them yeah. better people at all. Their values, mm. all of it. 
So, oh, yeah, definitely. So, well, that answers how we stay in the moment is trying. Yes. <laughs> I think that no, um, detaching ourselves. In a meandering ourselves, way, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was when people didn't have, you know, the Quakers and dealing with the Amish, certain cultures where they're not dealing with electricity or they're not dealing with, you know, these electrical things. They live happier lives. They're more peaceful. You know, the mind is more clear. You know, they are just living in the simplicity of life. And I think that is something that we all could use a, a retouch on because <laughs> when if you lose power, you know, people are just like, oh, my gosh, the first thing is like my phone, you know, and like, oh, my yep. gosh, I, I can't access my phone or my iPad's not going to work. It's like get a book. You know, like, <laughs> you know, go outside, you know, play in the yard a little bit. So the things that we yeah. did as kids nowadays, they're stuck on the iPad or on the computer or some game. So I think that's yeah, great. These that things are these things are like extensions of their limbs or it's true thing that's, uh, you know, yeah. and they're not developing the skills that are really needed to conversate between people and have great conversations and good communication skills because, they're stuck in some game or stuck on some pad. So I totally agree. Yeah. He, he, here's an interesting thing. Sorry, this will this won't take too long. But right. uh, I uh, I read uh, I was reading this book on uh, Generation Z, Gen Z, mm -hmm. and it was talking about there was one story they they brought up about this this little girl, uh, probably four years old or younger even, and uh, uh, since she was a, a kid. Um, well, since she was a, a baby, basically, um, she was given an iPad and she like basically learned everything off of that iPad. And she was always uh, into this card game where she, you know, tap on the card and it'll turn around, you know, it'll flip over. Mm -hmm. And one day they took the iPad from her and just gave her a real deck of playing cards, an actual deck of playing cards. And she kept trying to tap the cards. As if they'll turn over. <laughs> you never learn how to actually take the card itself and flip. I mean, that's. <laughs> and the sad thing was that that book was treating it so as if that's just how the world is now, because it was pretty much pro, I don't know, pro Gen Z, pro Internet, pro all of this uh, technology. And it was saying, well, this is just how kids are. You know, uh, I guess we need to balance things out a little bit, but this is how kids think nowadays. Like, no, this is not how kids no. think unless this is how you start them out. Exactly. If you, if you deprive them of these senses, if you start them off on an iPad instead of in the real world, this is exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just uh, thought that popped up. No, no, it's true. And speaking about children, I want to talk a little bit about homeschooling. Um, mm. about your beliefs about homeschooling, you know, do you feel that the regular school system teaching is better or worse for the kids today? Um, what's your opinion about homeschooling? Yeah, it, uh, it depends on what your objective is. Okay. Um, uh, Kimmy and I always like to say that the mom <laughs> is, uh, is like an employee factory. That's, that's what we like to okay. say. Okay. Because, um, not not all schools, obviously. I actually know some great schools that if I were to put uh, our kids in a quote unquote traditional school, these would be the schools that I'd put them in. But the majority basically um, have a curriculum that primes children to be uh, successful in the workforce, mm -hmm. while at the same time depriving them of, I think, again, the things that really matter. And uh, we want to be able to control our children's environment. And uh, this is something that I think is growing. The homeschool movement has been growing for a variety of reasons, but we're all in on the, uh, in the, in the homeschooling bandwagon, so to speak, <laughs> uh, because, yeah, because we just don't trust a lot of, uh, you know, what's being fed to our children uh, nowadays. And um, homeschooling, it's, um, if you just uh, look it up, if you're a parent who also wants to take your child's education and upbringing into your own hands, there's a lot of resources uh, out there for you. In fact, uh, the way Kimmy and I learned about the different approaches that we want to use for our kids growing up is through YouTube for, for the most part and through books and through articles and uh, connecting to, to the right groups as well, um, homeschooling moms, uh, homeschooling families, that sort of thing, and getting their take on uh, what they're doing 
to raise their kids. Uh, because at the same time, even though certain approaches exist, um, whether that be uh, Charlotte Mason or Montessori, which we're using for uh, mm-hmm. our kids, classical, you can look up, uh, there's about several different established uh, approaches to homeschooling. Mm-hmm. Aside from the strategy and the curriculum itself. There's also the culture of homeschooling. We're sort of waiting in uncharted territories right now because so much of the world doesn't understand or embrace uh, the homeschooling um, option. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just sort of it's sort of like uh, the employee world, really, where we're all raised to graduate, get a good degree, and find a nice, uh, secure job, which, by the way, doesn't really exist. I mean, just look at the past couple of years. Uh, the illusion of uh, security and safety, but that's just sort of the paradigm that we all grew up with. Same with schooling. We have this notion of what schooling is supposed to be. Um, But for Kimmy and I, especially because of the fact that we're global citizens, um, the way that we do it is that we just expose uh, uh, right now our son, our two-year-old boy, to um, different cultures. And uh, as we get the opportunity to travel more frequently, we want to immerse them as much as possible, um, you know, within these different cultures, different people, so that he can experience uh, uh, the world in a way that he's actually living it and not just reading off of a textbook. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the other advantage of homeschooling is that you have the choice and you have the option to be able to teach your children these things that normally aren't taught in most schools, which is, um, you know, financial intelligence, relationship building, uh, public speaking, even for the most part. And I mean, real public speaking, I mean, like getting the experience of doing it, not just reading the the structure of a speech and then going on stage and giving like a wooden talk, which there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. But that normally because uh, uh, we, we've had several experiences uh, um, looking for public speaking um forums for for kids um, in anticipation for when our, our kid grows up because we want him to be, uh, you know, a good speaker. And uh, a lot of these groups for teaching how to talk on stage for kids, it's very wooden, very, very prescriptive and mm-hmm. not really allowing them to, to free flow because, you know, people think that kids um, get on all of these tangents, which is true. But if you don't let them just speak their heart, then they'll suppress that forever they'll think that they have to adhere to a a rigid structure when they're speaking not just on stage but to other people Mm -hmm. so we allow our child to be who he is and uh our our son just so happens to be this really creative really uh um you know he has itchy feet he always likes to run around he always he's very (laughs) tactile he likes to touch things he likes to explore he is just not fit for a classroom environment and that's probably my bias uh, speaking right now because i know i never was I never was the fit for the classroom environment, but oh, anyway, okay, just okay. reeling it back to, yeah, just reeling it back to homeschooling. Um, the other advantage of homeschooling is that you can tailor the education or the speed of education to your specific child um, because every kid obviously learns a different way. If you employ a one size fits all sort of, uh, you know, curriculum or approach uh, to your child, then uh, you're stunting a lot of the kids who, are probably a little more creative mm-hmm. and they don't fit in that uh, classroom setting. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of things uh, I can touch on, but basically just do your research. And uh, if I can touch on one more um, thing that really turned the wheels in my head to consider other options than traditional schooling. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I was uh, uh, in the car one time uh, when I was, uh, I was a teenager at the time and uh, my cousin was uh, probably probably 10 or so, or, or younger, actually, maybe she was around six, but her homework for the day was to compile a list of the top 10 universities in California. And she was showing off her homework to uh, all the adults in the car, her parents and all the adults who were visiting uh, the States from uh, uh, the Philippines. And you know, everybody was uh, everybody was praising her. Her dad was saying, well, wow, what was I doing at six, seven, eight years old? I was playing in the river with all my friends. And here she is talking about the top 10 universities. Kids today have gotten so much smarter. And even me with my teenage brain at the time, I was like, I mean, isn't that normal? Isn't that what you should be doing? Playing in the river with your friends, just being <laughs> social and all of that stuff. Like, what is a six-year-old doing compiling a list of the top 10 universities in California? Mm -hmm. And I think this is exactly what I'm talking about. (laughs) Schools nowadays, or or at least, I'll be fair, maybe California schools are teaching kids how to be successful in the workforce. 
And uh, uh, last thing I'll say on this is a mentor of mine in in university, ironically, I happen to be, I happen to have um, studied in a in a great college that taught the, uh, had a great books curriculum. Very, um, it, it was it was a Catholic school. It was an actual Catholic school. Really imparted a lot of those soft and tangible skills. But anyway, uh, my mentor at that school said that school, university, up to the age of 21, 22, is for children or kids or teenagers to learn how to learn. It's a place for <laughs> students to learn how to learn. It's not a place for you to learn a trade. Once you graduate from university, then you can start thinking about employing, uh, getting into a trade school or higher learning and uh, actually learning particular skills that you want to get into as a, as, as a career, mm. um, something along those lines. And that really made me think. And it's true because the basis behind that is that kids, their brains are still forming. Their brains are still jello up until around 23. And so if right. we're trying to lock them, if we're trying to lock them in, especially cultural differences, I know you're there in Tokyo and uh, there's certain expectations that parents have of their children here in the Philippines, it's mm -hmm. become a nurse, you know, be become a doctor, become, you know, all of these things in India and a lot of cultures, they have certain expectations for their kids. If you lock them in that paradigm, man, all of the other abilities and gifts that they have their personality doesn't have any room to flourish because they'll think they're they're not allowed to yep. because they think that they have to adhere to this certain standard so homeschooling in a nutshell helps your children grow up to be the people that they were meant to grow up into if you just gave them that space and that's the biggest value of homeschooling for kim and i hmm. that's awesome what a great answer i mean i grew up in the school system um all of my siblings and we were great and learned lots of things. And I've had some friends that I've met here in Japan that their parents took them around the world when they were kids and they were homeschooled mm -hmm. the whole time. And they are just the most interesting people. Um, they speak yeah. a few languages very well and they can do a little bit of everything. It's like they know a little bit about this and, oh, I can do a little. And I'm like, how do you know all the, you know? Um, and granted, I think we, you know, we learned lots of skills and things, but having a world experience, like, my gosh, you can't read that in a book. You can't have that experience on page 785 of your textbook, you know, or watching a film strip. So to have the opportunity to have world experiences, you know, can really round you as a person to give you all of the ins and outs that you definitely would not get from Ms. Johnson teaching at the chalkboard in the classroom. <laughs> So nothing yeah. wrong with Miss Johnson and we love the chalkboard in the classroom. But, you know, I think that it's a great opportunity that you all are giving your children um, and they will again have this and they'll give it to their kids and it will be something that is passed on this, you know, a pathology in the sense that, you know, your family can pass on, which is so great. Awesome. Just great. Super. Uh, changing. I want to ask, has been the biggest risk that you have ever taken? And was. I was thinking about uh, this question as well beforehand, and I don't really have uh, one answer to that because I have taken a few, um, at least at least for me, big risks uh, for my life um, in pursuit of hopefully a big payoff. And uh, I mean, I guess one example of that was when I decided to uh, pursue my master's uh, in film um, in the US. And that was when uh, I was I actually proposed to my now wife, oh. right before I left the Philippines. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, that was a big risk, because I mean, I just didn't know where that was going to take me. You so know, wait, you uh, proposed uh, and then you left? I, I proposed and a month later I left. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's, Whoa. that's what I thought too. That was, that's what I thought too, Chris. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, here I am in a new country halfway around the world, you know, and this is, come on, this is film. This is not a STEM subject. There's no guarantee that I'm going to get a job out of school, especially here in Cal, especially there in California. I, wow. there was there, there was no way um or at least i thought so that was again victim mentality a little bit creeping in i'm like well <laughs> no, no, nobody else very few people got a break very few people got a break what makes me think that i'm gonna get a break i know um, right out of school but, but 
Yeah. And uh, I mean, ultimately, ultimately it didn't uh, work out. Not that I'm complaining because I think that uh, God dealt us uh, a better hand and we were always meant to, you know, come back home here to the Philippines and uh, do these other things that we're involved with now. But that was a big risk. Mm -hmm. That was a big risk. But uh, uh, to get to your um, the heart of your question, I think, which is do risks are risks necessary? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I I definitely think they're necessary. Um, Bringing up the word freedom here. Freedom comes with risk. Yes. Yes. With with freedom risk is necessary and not just with freedom, with growth and with progress and with success and with significance. Mm -hmm. If you want to get out of your shell, if you want to, um, if you want to, you know, um, how do I say, you know, if if you're, if you have a vision, if you have some sort of vision for your life, Mm -hmm. um, then you have to take a risk to, you know, ascend the steps to achieve that vision for that vision to become a reality because you're, you sure as heck are, is you're not going to get that in your comfort zone. No, Let's put can't. it that way. Yeah, you can't grow you, in you there. Ca- you cannot. You cannot. I mean, that is, again, the antithesis of sovereignty also. Um, victim mentality keeps you in that comfort zone. And if you want to break out of it, once you get that awareness, then you have to, again, once you get your faith, family, and freedom in order, that'll give you the tools and the direction you need to break out of that comfort zone and do something new. And the support and to be able to help you stay out of it. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I talk about support a lot and mentorship a lot, because, you know, no man is an island and we always need somebody to help push us or pull us even um, out of that spot that we've trapped ourselves in for so long, the place that we're comfortable. And that's why to me, even if it's uncomfortable, and I knew that was going to be uncomfortable, but there was a potential payoff at the end of it. And here's I think the most sobering, but I think the most inspiring thought at the same time is that I didn't get what I thought I would get, which is, you know, a shot at Hollywood and all the, you know, dreams, those early dreams that aspiring filmmakers in California have. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's fine. That's totally fine. Because, um, I mean, through my uh, journey so far, I realized that Hollywood isn't the place I'm meant to be anyway. All right. You know, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, I don't. First of all, I don't want to work for the man. Secondly, I don't believe even uh, I don't believe in the, the the direction, let's say, that Hollywood is going right now. And I don't want to be um, subject to whatever they have available for me then and to, uh, to to be a little dramatic to lose my soul there in Hollywood. I don't want, I don't want to subject myself to that. And definitely as a person who wants to grow his family and uh, I want to have a, a family that's strong in our faith and uh, all of that stuff, um, Hollywood just wasn't the the path for me. Mm-hmm. So that's the point I'm driving at is even if you don't reach that, that goal, that uh, visual, that ideal that you thought you wanted, I believe that God leads you to something better. And uh, yeah, right does. now, I'm not saying that yeah, I'm not saying that uh, I've reached the end of my journey, not even close. We've barely scratched the surface. You know, we're still just trying to make uh, things work uh, with, you know, the limitations that we have here with, again, with uh, this ongoing crisis that we're faced with. Mm-hmm. But I think I feel here's here's what I'll say. I feel more fulfilled, you know, um, nice. happiness. Everybody talks about happiness um, and that it's a palpable thing. You know, I'm not always happy in the emotional sense to the word. In fact, you know, it's sort of a struggle. You know, I'm raising a two year old and uh, <laughs> here, yeah, here, here in the Philippines, here in the Philippines, there's a lot of uh, challenges The the government keeps, uh, you know, flip flopping on certain issues and it's mm-hmm. making it hard. We're always left guessing as a family, but uh, that doesn't make us happy uh, a lot of the time, but at the same time, I feel fulfilled because I know that, that I'm heading in the direction that I believe God uh, ordained for us yes. to go on. And that makes me very happy because again, I, I have my podcast now. Uh, we have our brand, the sovereign brand. We're doing all these things that we're um, you know, doing right now. And I feel so much more fulfilled, mm. so much more fulfilled than we ever did when I, than when I was there in, um, in the States trying to chase a job and uh, I was rubbing shoulders with some people who were involved in a lot of big budget productions at the time mm-hmm. there in the States. You know, you you would think, man, you're in heaven. You're learning from the best of the best. But I just didn't feel as fulfilled as I did now. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know it at the time, but it really took these challenges, these risks to make you aware for me it. to realize, yes. to make me realize 
that there's something bigger in store for me. And I may not even, I don't, I definitely don't see the full picture just yet, but for sure me and um, I guess I can speak for my wife as well, because we always talk about our goals. I think she feels more fulfilled right now being at home here in the Philippines. And uh, we have some big moves that we're planning to make later on, but this is exactly where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And you only find that out. You only grow, you only progress in life if you take risks. Yes. Yes. I love that. And, you know, I believe that what God has for you, no man can take from you. So it's whatever, what has your name on it is for you. And so it's true. We have to be willing to, yeah, step out of our comfort zone and to just take that jump, that leap of faith to find the next step, you know, and it's there. It's waiting for us. <laughs> it's there waiting it for us with our name on it, just waiting. So I always feel like, yeah. let me do my let me do my part so we can meet up like we're supposed to, because we yeah. have to be willing to to do our part so that way we can equal up to what we were supposed to be. So that's awesome. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, in closing, I like to ask, do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Well, uh, reclaim your faith, family, freedom. <laughs> that's yes. always what I get at. I mean, if. If you're feeling stuck, um, if, if you feel like you're going through a tough time right now, always go back to what I call the first principles. Get back to those foundational values. And um, I think a better way to wrap it up is by saying, you know, just look for something beyond yourself. You know, look for something beyond yourself. Um, get out your own bubble and uh, find somebody who you admire right now and uh, consult with them. Figure out not just what advice they have for you career-wise or anything like that. Um, try to figure out how they think. Mm -hmm. Try to figure out and try to see what makes them tick, how they see the world and why they're succeeding. And take lessons from that and apply it to yourself so that you can start taking the steps to see and have a self-awareness of the bubble perhaps or the paradigm that you find yourself stuck in right now. And uh, from there, once you have that self-awareness, again, it'll be not smooth sailing, but it'll definitely be a lot easier to step out of a bubble if you realize and are self-aware of the fact that you're in a bubble <laughs> in the first place. So, and definitely that, 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 that doesn't, uh, it starts with, it starts and ends with you, but, but no man is an island. So find somebody else and, uh, find somebody else and uh, find the encouragement and the motivation to do something more meaningful and more significant with your life. I love that. That's awesome. Can you let everyone know how they can reach you if they're interested to listen to one of your podcasts or get in touch with you? Sure. Well, the best way I can uh, provide value to your audience is through my podcast. Uh, Sovereign is my flagship show. You can find it on any podcatcher out there. Um, I actually upload the video versions of my interviews on YouTube, so you can check that out as well. And if you happen to be in the network marketing space, uh, you can check out Your Sovereign Downline. That's Your Sovereign Downline. Again, you can find it on any uh, podcatcher out there. And if you want to get in touch with me directly, you can go to my Instagram at Real Dawn Abud and send me a DM. I reply to everybody unless you're a spammer or a scammer. So <laughs> let me know. <laughs> let me know clearly that uh, you're talking to me. <laughs> yes. And uh, yes. And um, lastly, uh, I guess my website as well, donabud.com. Um, if you want to see what else I'm up to, and if you want to uh, get in touch with me as well, there's a contact form there and I'm happy to help uh, in any way I can. Awesome. And that is www.donabad.com. That's right. Excellent. Excellent. Yep, that's for right. people writing that down to get it. And the Instagram is at real, R-E-A-L, D-O-N, Don Abad, A-B-A-D for people who are writing got that it. down as well. Thank you so you much. It. In closing, I always like to finish off with asking all of my guests, is your glass half empty or half full? Oh, sorry, Chris. Don, you still asked me that question. <laughs> sorry, I was sorry. like, oh, Don, he's Ed thinking deeply. Part. He's like thinking deeply. No, no, no. No, that's for you, I'm, Don. I'm not sorry. I, was, I thought you were answering the audience. Asking no, no, no. Audience. That's sorry. for you. Edit it's that okay. part out. Um, sorry, can you please, can you please uh, ask that again? Sure, sure. Um, the question is, is your glass half empty or half full? 
it is always half full because I'm always looking forward. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Simple as that. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Definitely. Everybody has a different answer. So it's it there is no wrong. It's wherever you are and whatever it is that you want to express. So thank you so much for taking some time out today to be a guest here on Glass Half Full. We're so glad that you could be with us today. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, my pleasure. We'll talk with you soon. And thank you to all our listeners for listening in to another episode of Glass Half Full, a podcast and a safe platform for everyone to share their life experiences. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Levins. Please subscribe, follow, and rate this podcast on Apple Music for more learning experiences. Until next time, know you are blessed. See ya!